got news for you. You start to treat him like a person and his willingness for you is going to explode. Guess what you don't do? Guess what you don't do in all the circles that I've come out of and appreciate and love? You don't worship the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because it would be really stupid. Can you hear me? It'd be really stupid to worship an anointing. And you wonder why worshiping the living God is such a strange, weird thing. Is because they call him anointing all the time. But if he's a person and he's the Holy Ghost, and he's God in the earth today, you better worship him. That was pretty good right there. That was worth coming to this website. First John chapter two, and then let's look at verse 27. But the anointing, say the anointing, which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing, say the same anointing. The same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you. Notice he says it. It the anointing hath taught you. You shall abide in him. Now, I've heard people use this verse of scripture and say, well, I don't need anybody to teach me anything. I don't need a pastor. I don't need a teacher. I don't need a prophet. I don't need any of that. That's not what he's saying. Well, part of that same anointing comes on the preacher. <laughs> comes on the pastor to say things that frankly you need to hear right yeah. are you here yeah. so that's not what he's talking about but what I want to bring out here is but the anointing which you re have received of him now who did you receive the anointing from well the Holy Ghost he's the one who who deals them out in our day and age so the Holy Ghost is giving anointings and we can I'll take you to scriptures a little bit later to clear that up the Holy Ghost gives individually as he wills different gifts different anointings you you would understand there's an anointing for healing there's an anointing for preaching you understand that right here we have but the anointing which you have received of him he is not the anointing he the anointing is something that you receive from him mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. because the Holy Ghost is not an anointing mm -hmm. you understand this yeah. Now, I touched on this very briefly last week, but I feel like we need to go into it a little more. The anointing you receive of him. It didn't say the anointing, that is him. The anointing you receive of him. So the Holy Ghost has anointings that he gives to people. But he is not an anointing. The Holy Ghost is not an anointing. The Holy Ghost is not a power. The Holy Ghost is not an energy. The Holy Ghost is not a force. All of these things go cross rise with most of people's doctrine in this day and age the Holy Ghost is not any of those things he's a person he's God mm -hmm. he's a divine entity okay. it's a big deal go to Acts chapter 1 Acts chapter 1 let's look at verse 8 but you shall receive power say power, power. now would the anointing be a power is the anointing a power mm -hmm. yeah. yeah is power a power yeah power could be energy power could be anointing power could be a force you shall receive power after mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost comes on you mm -hmm. but the Holy Ghost has to come on you and then he's the one who gives you the anointing he's the one who gives you the power do you understand this but he's not the power it comes afterwards after usually obeying him mm -hmm. and consecrating yourself to him mm -hmm. then the power shows up are you here so the Holy Ghost is not a power he is not an energy he's not a force he's not an anointing those are things you receive of him they're not him but they come from him he gives them okay. he's a person what kind of person is he a divine person he is God in the earth today well no wonder he's able to give the anointings and to give the power he's in the earth but what if all we do is treat him as if he were the anointing or he were a power first of all that's offensive it's offensive to me it's got to be offensive to him mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. so when I say the words the power of God what do you think the anointing you should not think Holy Ghost 
because the Holy Ghost is not the power of God and that's what how most people treat him in this day and age and even in groups that we might even associate with that the Holy Ghost is the power oh, that's the Holy Ghost on you mm. no that's the anointing from the Holy Ghost Amen. are you here it's a big deal and I'll show you why it's a big deal as we go on here so when I say the power of God it's the power of God it's the power that God gave mm -hmm. all right it is the power that which he gives it's not him he's not the power that he gives when you receive the Holy Ghost you're not receiving a power I hate it they said oh have you received the, the tongues yet the tongues yet they always say it weirdly too have you received the tongues no you receive the Holy Ghost and after you receive the Holy Ghost he gives you the power and the ability to speak with other tongues as he say he as he gives you utterance a little bit about where this is all coming from I've been part of the word of faith so to speak people call it the word of faith movement how could the word of faith be a movement it's what the Bible is this is the word of faith which we preach for over 35 years in 1982 I got born again saved however you want to say it and then I got filled with the Holy Ghost watching Kenneth Copeland on TV well he told me how to do it and then I actually his wife told me too and I went up in my room and I got on my knees and I said Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost came in and I began to speak with other tongues 1982 I was 17 years old and I entered into this group called Word of Faith at that time you know you got Kenneth Copeland you got Kenneth Hagen all these guys it was great thank God I got into that group and not some other group because I learned a lot I learned a lot from their faith I learned how to live but from that day forward 17 years of age till whatever I am today you can figure it out if you listen to the the numbers I'm giving you but don't my point is I've been around for a long time and then I you know that, that little thing I told about going down to I quit my job I was working as a cashier or whatever they do in grocery stores stock shelves that was one of my first regular job of course I had other jobs I played in the band before I got saved which isn't a real good thing to do when you are saved right and so I got a regular job and I was like I've got to go down here I got to get into this so I took you know what little money I had you don't make a lot of money you know we're been a cashier especially in that day and I went down there nobody liked it my dad thought I was crazy everybody thought I was crazy but I went and I went to I went down to Orlando and I went into all of Kenneth Coben's meetings and then they went down to Miami and I went to Miami and then shortly thereafter I went to Rama because I knew the call of God was on my life and that was the place to go if you're word of faith because I've heard of Kenneth Hagen and I started listening to his tapes when I went down to my grandmother's house I had two suitcases one that I hope I had underwear in I don't remember at this point but the other one was full of tapes that I'd recorded off the TV and off the radio because that's where Copeland was that's where Hagen was and I listened to them all day every day my faith was going through the roof well anyway so that was 1987 I went and I I, I went to Rama. And in 1987 at the end of that year Kenneth Hagin laid his hands on me and consecrated me to the ministry so from 1987 until this day that's quite a while right I wrote it down here that's like 31 years I've been separated under the ministry so I am NOT a novice in this I'm not a novice in the word of faith and the doctrine of the word of faith I was one of two people that got 4.0 at Rama so I can speak as far as I'm concerned maybe you don't like it but I'm as far as I'm concerned I can speak with some authority on this matter that I'm about to present to you today so it wasn't but a couple weeks ago I didn't think I said I told you this last week a couple weeks ago I heard one of these word of faith preacher you know who I said if it, was, it wasn't Copeland but anyway it was one of those other guys that's very high up in the word of faith and we'd all recognize his name and he talked about in the midst of his sermon he said that when Jesus went to be baptized by John that the heavens opened and an anointing came down on Jesus and I want to pull my hair out because the problem with that isn't just that he said that it's that for the rest 
of the doctrine that is maintained in most circles now most of them would say oh, of course the Holy Ghost is a person but in their their way they treat scriptures and the way they deal with their stuff it's always about the anointing and the anointing is the Holy Ghost are you here mm -hmm. but an anointing did not come on Jesus when he was baptized and we're gonna look at that now mind you I love this preacher guy I send him money to this day I follow his faith he has a lot of good things to say but this is a problem especially with me and I believe so with the Holy Ghost an anointing came on Jesus at the baptism of John no not at all who came on Jesus at the baptism of John the Holy Ghost the third person of the Trinity came on Jesus later in his years Kenneth E Hagan tried to correct some of this that was going on he could see it because they were all about the word the word the word the word speak the word only I'm all about speak the word only you understand that but he tried to correct and he said yes we are a word people but we're also a spirit people you understand that and he was trying to make this correction frankly it was too little too late because now we then we had all these churches pop up of which I was a part and frankly we were for a part because I was trying to get in I was trying to be a good pastor we're a word and spirit church they'll call themselves the fact is they have the word and then they just have the anointing mm -hmm. the spirit isn't the Holy Ghost the spirit is an anointing yeah. and so we're yielding to the anointing and that means something well it does mean something but there's still an error there's an error in those groups mm -hmm. that I'm speaking about today whether people like it or not mm -hmm. like I said I've been around for a long time I remember hanging out with a uh, dr. Ed Dufresne remember him yeah and uh any of the people any of them go like this any of them any of them that were around I was with him first back in 19 what was it 1987 well, I was there where were you there were 25 people in that room when he was there you understand mm -hmm. it's kind of like Paul said he brags about himself to get a point across I'm telling you I've been around for a while what I've come to, to decide is that they have learned how to function in an anointing or with an anointing and they call that the Holy Ghost that's the Holy Ghost that's not the Holy Ghost that is an anointing of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words and he gives anointings now if they wanted to say it that way then they would be correct and frankly then the rest of their doctrine would be better mm -hmm. yes. are you all right with this mm -hmm. yes. no it sounds like I'm yelling but maybe I am I'm annoyed at it because when you have people that are preachers and they're preaching to literally tens of thousands of people and they have the audacity to say that an anointing came on Jesus and not to mention the Holy Ghost as a person what does that do to the tens of thousands of people who heard it mm -hmm. and they like him I like him what are they doing now they're talking about the anointing that comes on you and have you received the tongues yet and they're not following God the Holy Ghost so we understand that an anointing did not come down on Jesus at his baptism a person did say a person did, a person did. The anointing came afterwards I will show you that in a minute Luke 3 21 now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened what opened up the heaven, the heaven was opened and the anointing descended is that what it said no, no. and it says and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from where the voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son and and in thee I am well pleased so we have three persons of the Trinity right here you understand who's in heaven the father who came out of heaven the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost right as a person and where's Jesus he's on earth with the Holy Ghost are you here yes one thing I'd like to bring out here is that the uh, let me read this again the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape now people say oh he descended in the bodily shape of a dove does it say of a dove 
no because that would be impossible for God to assume the body of a dove what are you some kind of weirdo witch shape-shifting weirdo no God would have come down in a bodily shape of a man why because we were created in his image and then he tells us he commands us not to make any image of a flying thing or reptile or anything right and worship right. that right. are you here yep. the bodily shape was not a dove the dove describes the descent yes. mm -hmm. and the dove doesn't even mean dove it just means a regular word for bird like a pigeon but no he's got to be a white dove where 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 white dove did it say that it doesn't say white dove are you here it was just a bird he came down like a bird how are you going to describe it man like god being comes down like a rock i don't think so like a bird like a dove is not describing the bodily shape like a dove is describing the descent i hope this makes sense anyway we'll prove this out in a couple other verses let's go to uh, mark chapter 1 these things matter you, you think you know the Holy Ghost enjoys he's God in the earth today you think he enjoys people liking him unto a dove and then they come with all this stuff oh he's so mild and mannered and he's white he's pure he's white he's pure is that they're trying to attribute all of these things from a white dove to the Holy Ghost it makes me really upset because I know the Holy Ghost as the living God Say the living God. The living God. He created doves. Okay. Mark chapter 1 and verse 10. And straightway coming up out of the water, this is at his baptism, the heavens were opened and the Spirit, like a dove, descending. What is the like a dove referring to? The descending. Thank you. And the Spirit, like a dove, descending. Are you getting this? like a dove describes the descending and not the bodily form all right go back to Matthew two or three witnesses we should have this established Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 and Jesus answering said unto him suffer it now to be so for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness and then he suffered him talking about you got to baptize me John and verse 16 and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God who an anointing he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove yes. mm -hmm. what is the like a dove it's talking about the descending mm -hmm. so number one he's not a dove but he descended like a bird meaning he came out of heaven that's how you would describe it who did and and Luke just provided us with a little more information that him a person with a bodily shape came out of heaven mm -hmm. that's what we should have got out of that enough of that for now but you know you know how many people don't hear this and so they go oh hey you know uh, the spirit the anointing can assume the form of a bodily shape of a bird or whatever like you know you're missing the fact that he's God and frankly that's offensive mm -hmm. that's right. to him and to me Luke chapter 4 we see that you know the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus not an anointing let's look at verse 1 uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit the Spirit who the Holy, the Holy Ghost into the wilderness so when you're filled with the Holy Ghost he leads you That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus being the fu full of the Holy Ghost was led by a person he began a relationship with the person of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and started to follow him you're led by a person say I'm led, I'm led. By, a person. by a person who's the person the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost you're not led by an anointing you're led by a person now let's look down at verse 14 and Jesus returned from remember he was up there and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights right and then Jesus returned in the what the power of the Spirit see he wasn't in the power of the Spirit before he was being led by the Spirit he had a relationship say relationship, relationship. 
a relationship with the person of the Holy Ghost and then after some obedience what happened power came on him oh you mean Holy Ghost came on him no power which came from the Holy Ghost are you here all right look down to verse 18 is this making sense the Spirit of the Lord this is Jesus talking the Spirit of the Lord is upon me who would that be who's the Spirit of the Lord the Holy, the Holy Ghost is upon him because he say he. he what does he usually mean it's a person he hath anointed me was he the anointing no he anointed people anoint the person anoints are you getting this the person isn't the anointing the person anoints he hath anointed me the person he is not an anointing the person anoints are you getting this mm -hmm. he hath anointed me did Jesus know who anointed him yes. mm -hmm. he said so he preached this everywhere he goes from what we understand mm -hmm. as his custom was this is what he would say the Spirit of the Lord who he met mm -hmm. who was leading him anointed him does this matter mm -hmm. yeah. yes it does so while we're at it I just want to add another thing here I mean I could preach all around this both up, upside and downside you know that and have go to John chapter 14 I just want to bring one thing out here John chapter 14 verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments who's saying this Jesus, Jesus. see it's red letters and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter Jesus was likening himself as to a comforter to them a helper a supplier an advocate one that was with them right mm -hmm. and he says when I go to the father I'm gonna talk to him and he's gonna send another another what another like Jesus I'll pray the father he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth was Jesus a person so if he sends another what's he gonna send a person and we have other scriptures I'm not gonna take you there but it says he over and over and over again what I wanted to point it out is that if he the Holy Ghost was a power or an anointing then you're still alone because right. mm -hmm. an anointing and a power is not a person he said I'm not gonna leave you by yourself I'm gonna send another person and if the Holy Ghost is an anointing you're still alone so most people are still alone and they're treating God like they're still alone instead of walking with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today are you here yes. if he's a power then you're still alone is he a power no. no he's God he's a person you're not alone isn't that good news see I am preaching the good news he is a person who anoints he's a person who gives power he's a person who lives with you and will be with you forever he's a person who gives gifts now think think I'm gonna share a verse of scripture with you and, and it should start to show you how important this is when you start to interpret the Bible based on doctrine that is sound instead of these misconceptions Deuteronomy 8 18 what does it say you don't have to turn there you know it says it is God that gives you power to get wealth who's the God we're talking about in the earth today the Holy Ghost gives you power to get wealth if you interpreted this wrong it would be God who gives you the Holy Ghost to get wealth but now you're starting to see that it's God who gives power God who gives you power first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4 and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power yeah. does your Bible differentiate yeah. then what are you yelling at me for it's a big deal mm -hmm. yes. and the Holy Ghost is offended mm -hmm. wish I could get that across I said what do you want me to preach on this week I always say that what do you want me to preach on said I want you to talk about that again it annoys him mm -hmm. it would annoy you too and frankly it sets people on the wrong trajectory mm -hmm. 
my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but a demonstration of the spirit who's that and power who's that the anointing right it's not a who right yeah very good are you getting this the spirit and a power why is it such a big deal frankly it's offensive do we want to offend him do we want to grieve him the Bible specifically says grieve not the Spirit of God which means he can be grieved Jesus said if you offend him or speak a word against him that won't be forgiven you he put him above himself he said you can speak against me all you want I know you're gonna but he said don't do that about the Holy Ghost frankly it's offensive and number two it's plain ignorant of the scriptures yeah. If you want to walk with the Holy Ghost who wrote the scriptures you want to walk with him closer you're gonna to have to know what they say and rightly divide the word of truth mm -hmm. he is the spirit of truth all right go to 1st Corinthians 12 you know uh, if the Bible really wanted us to not be ignorant wouldn't it say that somewhere mm -hmm. oh okay 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts or things pertaining to the spirit things pertaining to the Holy Ghost brethren I would not have you ignorant let's look this look down just for the sake of time here go to verse 7 but the manifestation of the Spirit or the gift of the Spirit verse 7 is given so who gives it the Holy Ghost he gives the manifestation he gives the anointing he gives the power who does the Holy Ghost right verse 8 4 to 1 is given by the Spirit mm -hmm. who's the giver of the gifts the Holy, the Holy Ghost the Spirit for one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom to another you could say is given the word of knowledge by the same Spirit go down to verse 11 all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit dividing or giving to every man severally as he wills he is not an anointing but he is one who gives gifts he is one who gives power I hope you are getting this dividing or giving as he wills I got news for you you start to treat him like a person and his willingness for you is going to explode guess what you don't do guess what you don't do in all the circles that I've come out of and appreciate and love you don't worship the Holy Ghost you know why because it would be really stupid it, can you hear me it'd be really stupid to worship an anointing mm. right. and you wonder why worshiping the Living God is such a strange weird thing is because they call him an anointing all the time mm -hmm. but if he's a person and he's the Holy Ghost and he's God in the earth today you better worship him that was pretty good right there that was worth coming to this website for frankly it's ignorant can you see that it's ignorant it's ignorant and it's offensive to the Living God do you want to be offensive to the Living God no. do you want to be ignorant of him and how he does things no of course not so let's get with the program is this any good you think this is necessary one of the reasons I preach these things because you know you know that I'm gonna put this online and I'm gonna put it out there and I'm gonna put tags on it like word of faith so people come and hear it and get corrected and start worshiping the Living God which before they were bound from because it's an we were confused we were ignorant we didn't know whether he was an anointing or God or what's going on what is going on tongues tongues the gift of speaking in tongues is something he gives he gives Romans chapter 15 verse 19 through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium I have fully preached the gospel of Christ do you think Paul knew this by the power of the Spirit of God so he knew the Spirit of God and he knew the power Romans 15 verse 13 now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing is that good mm -hmm. you think you're gonna get there if your doctrines squirrely mm -hmm. 
no he can't look at this now the God of all hope fill you whoo with all joy and peace in believing for your believing to be right you have to have your scriptures right you can't believe the right things about the person of the Holy Ghost if you're believing the scriptures wrongly now the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost how are you gonna do it through the power or the anointing or the force or whatever it is that he's giving you you're not gonna bound through the power of someone you don't know you're not gonna bound through the power listen of someone you don't worship he's the Holy Ghost he's the Living God say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I worship you I worship you are the Living God the living I thank you thank that you. through your power I can abound in hope and peace and joy in believing in you I worship you Holy Ghost I thank you Holy Ghost in Jesus name Amen Holy Ghost your God